We are now entering the month of May in 2021, and it has been more than a year since COVID-19 pandemic began. What a devastation it has caused to human life, our economy, our whole life has changed in a fundamental way. You know, people keep talking about it's a new normal, and nothing about this feels normal. And in many parts of the world, the devastation continues to stay strong. And we are hearing tragic news of uh, massive human suffering from India, for example. It's heartbreaking. In the United States, we seem to be doing better, driven by very rapid rate of vaccination over the last few months. Uh, we seem to be doing better. Our rates of infections are down. Our hospitalizations are down. And in general, life seems to be uh, feeling a little bit better. But we still have a lot of work to do especially in light of the fact that there continues to be a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of hesitation about vaccines in general, vaccination, vaccine hesitancy. Hello everyone, I'm Naveen Agarwal and I want to welcome all of you to my weekly video update. Now this uh, question of vaccine hesitancy or vaccine skepticism, uh, whatever you want to call it, has been weighing very heavily on my mind uh, for some time now, especially in light of what happened with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. In the middle of April, it was uh, put on hold because of some rare blood clot events. And I talked about that in a video. You can find that on my YouTube channel. And within two weeks, it took them about two weeks to evaluate the data, uh, look at everything from every angle. And then the independent vaccine committee recommended that the pause be lifted. But within these two weeks, a lot of damage was done to the public feeling about uh, vaccines in general. In fact, CDC's own data that they presented to the vaccine committee showed that over a period of two weeks, beginning middle of April, the willingness of people to take the J&J vaccine was only 20%, that's just one in five. And for Pfizer, Moderna, it wasn't too much better, roughly around 50, 60% willingness to take those vaccines. So in general, the vaccine hesitancy uh, still continues to stay strong. Now, um, let's see where we are. According to the CDC, as of April 30th, about 237 million doses had been administered, but and that counts for only 30% of the US population uh, now considered fully vaccinated. Yeah, about 40, 43% are uh, uh, the ones that you, they have received at, at least one dose. So they're partially there, not fully there. We have a long way to go. Uh, and vaccine hesitancy continues to stay strong. So uh, this has been really weighing very heavily on my mind. And I opened a poll on LinkedIn uh, to just have a conversation with my colleagues. And I asked them a very simple question. How can we help uh, somebody overcome their uh, vaccine hesitation? And I gave them a couple, few choices. Uh, but my, my intent was to have a conversation. And this is exactly what I want in this particular video. There's going to be a general uh, open conversation with all of you and I want to invite you in to share your thoughts, your feelings and concerns, especially if you have uh, hesitation around this vaccine or vaccination in general. Uh, please do share your comments and opinions and I want to hear, I want to listen and understand where you are coming from. Uh, I read a very fascinating article in the New York Times recently, uh, which is uh, talking about some interesting understanding and uh, research that has emerged from the field of social psychology that is very relevant to this area. And uh, as I learn more about risk perception, how people make benefit risk decisions in their daily lives, as a practitioner of risk management for medical devices uh, and as an engineer, this is fascinating. I I'm, I'm really fascinated by this research and these concepts and I want to understand more, especially by talking with uh, all of you and having a conversation. So I will talk about those uh, some key principles that have emerged from that research and how it aligns with my own reading of uh, research around risk perception uh, overall. So I want to talk about that. Uh, but most, again, I want to emphasize, most importantly, I want to invite you in. Uh, so let me make one key point right away. Uh, just because someone is hesitant about uh, COVID-19 vaccine doesn't mean that they are against all kind of vaccination, right? Uh, they may have specific concerns around this vaccine 
and they may be okay with other type of types of vaccination. Uh, so it's not appropriate for us to, you know, label them as anti-vaxxers or judge them in, in some ways. Because it's a spectrum of beliefs. It goes from one end to all the way to the other end where someone might be truly against everything. Not just vaccination, uh, but even pharmaceuticals or other treatments. Uh, because they look at all these things at, as non-natural. It's, it's valid, but there's a spectrum of belief. So we need to understand that. Uh, not everybody thinks the same way. So we need to have a conversation with that understanding and really have true empathy to figure out on a case by cases uh, where they are coming from. Okay, so now let's go back to the principles from social psychology. So in general, what the New York Times article is telling us is uh, those who have skepticism about uh, vaccines in general have a few core moral intuitions and actually let me take a step back all of us have these core beliefs and core moral intuitions let's say you're a very technical guy your core belief is your decision should be driven by data and science right nothing wrong with that but many other people don't may not believe that way equally relevant and important i'm not saying this is right or this is wrong they are equally relevant and valid Okay, so what they're saying is that uh, people who have hesitation have certain core beliefs and moral intuitions on which their worldview is built. The worldview is very complex. You know, what is right, what is not right is built on those core beliefs. And it is there that people dig in, not consciously, but intuitively. That's where their response comes out from. Not because they don't know the information, not because they don't understand the science, not because they don't understand the data, but they look at that differently. Okay, so we need to acknowledge that. So what are those some of those core beliefs? So they're saying in general, those who have hesitation have this strong sense of liberty and personal freedom. They want control over their decisions. They have less deference for authority, any authority, not just government. And some of them have uh, this strong mindset about purity of their body, what goes in something which is natural or not natural and again these beliefs are on a spectrum not everybody will have the same beliefs as as all of them uh, and not to the same degree so there are a lot of differences that's what makes us human right we are all different but in general that's a model and uh, it is very consistent with what i've read about research on risk perception right i have read that many many articles many books lately have been very fascinated about this because as a practitioner of risk management I, I focus on effectiveness. I know there are standards and regulations that our industry has to follow but they just tell you what is expected. They don't tell you how to do it and I'm interested in the how piece. When I advise clients my focus is on helping them become effective not just compliant. So I want to understand it from a bigger perspective and that's where I'm coming from and um, I'm learning every day and this is part of my exercise to learn from all of you so really please share your thoughts and comments with me i would love to hear from you okay so that's a worldview that i'm developing as a practitioner of risk management and i hope you will consider that so having talked about what are some of those factors uh, let me share with you what i have learned so far from my uh, poll on linkedin uh, close to 145 people have responded and this is not a scientific poll only people in my network or people who might be connected to them are responding but uh, I had four choices, like the first one was uh, give them more data. The second one was acknowledge their concerns. The third was influence their influencers. And the fourth was something else. And 45% uh, of the respondents have selected acknowledge their concerns. About 35% are saying give them more data. But many of the people who are selecting give them more data saying that it should be done after we have acknowledged their concerns. So in general, there's a good awareness and understanding that, hey, we need to first understand where the other person is coming from. However, what I want us to be mindful of, which you know I have fallen into the trap many, many times as, as a technical guy, is to jump to data. Let's pause. Let, let's let's um, be true to what we are saying that, hey, let's, let's hear other people out. Uh, so it is, uh, it is very good response and a lot of conversation. Some were strong opinions. Some were very frustrated that they have tried in the past and they cannot seem to find a way forward in those conversations. So I understand those frustrations as well. And uh, I encourage all of you to keep it up. Don't give up, right? Keep trying. 
let's continue to enhance our understanding and be humble enough to say we don't know everything and have empathy to say i'm i'm going to be with you and i want to understand where you are coming from because here's what i believe bottom line we cannot make anyone change their minds cannot all we can do is offer a different perspective a different angle a different view so they themselves realize that there is another view there you know all of us are living in a bubble right now because of social media and everything and these forces are contributing to lack of perspective in our society in general so that's what we can do we can offer people another view another perspective so i hope uh, i hope that's exactly what's happened so i i still uh, remain very interested and i i want to invite you to have a conversation with me i hope you are also thinking about this and uh, trying to figure out how to handle it with your friends colleagues or network of uh, friends family even family members you might have differences of differences of opinion and you are trying to figure out how to do it uh, let's all talk about it maybe we can come up with uh, a better way and share those insights with each other please uh, let me uh, hear those out let me have your comments your perspective engage with me by dropping a comment here or follow me on linkedin ha- and have a discussion with me over there i really look forward to hearing from you and i want to thank you for your interest and attention hopefully all of you and your family members and loved ones are staying safe in these very difficult circumstances Thank you.